Hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Today is Thursday, December 29th, 2022. Welcome, welcome to the episode of Behind the Bar. Listen, 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 listen. First and foremost, I want to say shout out to Matt Hoffa and my expert opinion. I mean, the content over there has been great. Um, it's a breath of fresh air as far as uh, hip hop content is concerned. Um, I'm seeing you drop a lot of videos on a consistent basis, a bunch of videos, like probably like 10, 11 videos a day, if not more. Um, I am mean, I'm appreciating the consistency. I'm appreciating the conversation, um, your platform, you know, I always was hoping that somebody, one of our peoples could keep up with Vlad TV. And it seems like, you know, Mad Hoffa and my expert opinion and them guys over there are definitely dropping bangers after bangers. I mean, they had Bobby Smurder, Styles P, they had my, my guy Roddy Rebel up there, they had the baby up there. I mean, they had Omar Epps up there, uh Tony Yayo. I mean, I mean, the list goes on and on from Method Man to just all types of people, man. You know, DJ Drama. I mean, the list goes on and on. Make sure y'all go over there and check out my expert opinion with Matt Hopper. Now, I just finished watching um, the J Hood uploads. You know what I mean. Um, I remember back in the day when I was in high school, J Hood was uh, the next anticipated artist coming out of, you know, D Block. And you know, I remember being a fan of J Hood. I thought he was had good bars. I thought he was up there with the Lloyd Banks and the Joel Santana's of the game. I mean, I was excited to see and listen to his project. Um, and I honestly didn't know what went left and why he disappeared off of. The label D Block, you know what I mean? And I never understood the backstory of what happened. I do remember a viral clip going around on Raw Star some years back, probably over 10 years ago, of him dragging the D Block chain and everything like that. But I never knew the backstory to it. Anyways, long story short, you know, um, I was watching Jay Hood on my expert opinion, and I'm listening to his story and how he met, you know, how he met Sheik Lutz, you know. Basically, he said he met Sheik Luce by pretty much um, going to his uh, family's house, knocking on doors and everything like that, and kind of was stalking the guy. I mean, hey, you know, I wouldn't recommend anybody do it like that, but he actually got through, was able to get his demo out, and ever since then, you know, Sheik Luce co-signed him, and I'm, a, I'm assuming Jadakiss and Styles P also co-signed him. And I remember he was a big deal. You know, I remember on Sheik Luce's song, um, Two Guns Up, you know, he had a hard verse on there. He had a a lot of nice bars and everything. One of my uh, most memorable songs about him was Dead Beat Dad. And I remember listening to him talk about his father. I was like, damn, this guy going hard on his father. You know what I mean? He was like, um, I don't got no father. I'm a bastard. I don't need no father because he's a F word with that rhymes with maggot. I'm like, damn, this guy is raw. Like, you know what I mean? He's uncut. And I was like, okay, I could appreciate a guy like this. You know what I mean? Out here spitting bars and, you know, he, he kind of went into the flow of D-Block. He fit into me, in my personal opinion. Um, so as I'm listening to the backstory over there on this channel, come to find out that allegedly, according to Jay Hood, that um, they wasn't doing right by him. You know what I mean? Um, they wasn't keeping up to the end of the bargain. Um, they shelved his album. They wasn't putting no marketing behind his album. Come to find out, somebody stole um, $60,000. Jay Hood never said who stole the money. Uh, he basically said after his mother, Jay Hood's mom house burnt down and everything like that. And the label had issued out a check for $60,000, but it never went to Jay Hood. It went to somebody else. Um, Jay Hood never said the name, but I'm going to assume that it may have been allegedly been Sheik Luz. That's what he was alluding to. He was alluding, he was alluding that he believes that Sheik Luz may have stole his check. Long story short, he was on the Mount Expert Opinion, he was telling his story. And he was very apologetic. And I think Jay Hood took accountability for the things that he may have done to kind of, you know, mess up the deal as far as, you know, he used to, he went and started working with G-Unit, 50 Cent and them. And um, at the time, 50 Cent and G-Unit was beefing with D-Block hard, you know what I mean? Uh, they was making this record, this records back and forth to each other. And it was, it was getting kind of ugly. You know what I mean? Um, he, as I said earlier, he dragged the D-block chain, this, down the third. And, you know, things went left. You know, he was pretty much blackballed and everything like that. And 
according to the story that Jay Hill is telling that telling is that he got into a lot of competition with other people, other artists, and getting beat up and jumped inside of clubs and everything like that. Not saying that it's related, but he said that you know he was hosting a party one day and people was in the crowd saying screaming D block this and D block that and F Jay Hood and stuff like that. And Jay Hood said he jumped in the audience and Jay Hood got his ass whooped. But anyways, um. I come here to basically give my personal opinion about what happened or what I seen earlier today. Styles P went live on his Instagram. Styles P was very, very upset. Now, before I show y'all what Styles P said, I want to say this, right? As people who interview artists, podcasters, people like the Vlads and the the, the Million Dollars with the Game and the Mad Hoffers and you know, all these other podcasts out there that interview artists, you know, me as a consumer of the content, I like to hear all sides of the story so we can have an understanding exactly what happened. You know what I mean? I'm, I enjoy a great story. And I think in my personal opinion, before I show you what Styles P said, I think Styles P was a little bit out of line by what he said about Matt Hoffa. He explained that he's disappointed in Matt Hoffa. Now, Matt Hoffa, his job, right, is to get the story from the horse's mouth himself, right? I understand that, you know, Styles P was on the show uh, a few weeks prior, and I guess Styles P thought as though he should have asked him, meaning Matt Hoffa should have asked Styles P, like, yo, what's up with Jay Hood? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, no Styles P, I'm sorry, no um, Jay Hook questions was asked or Styles P when Styles P was right there in the barbershop. So Styles, Styles P felt Styles some type of way. Um, salute to Matt Hoffa for giving Styles P a voice to be able to tell his side of the story. Now, this story has been told many times before. I don't understand why Styles P is upset now because Jay Hook went on Queen's Flip and told his story. Jay Hood has his own platform that he told his story. This story has been told um, for years now. I believe he went on Queen's Clip about three years ago. So why is Style P mad now? Why is he saying something now? I have no idea. And I don't even know why Style P is even saying anything because if I understand what Jay Hood was saying is that he has more of an issue with Sheik Luch. He's the one that accused Sheik Luch of trying to fight him. He's the one that accused Sheik, uh, Sheik Luch of allegedly um, stealing a $60,000 check for him. He's the one that accused Sheik Luce of not being able to promote his music and his and, and, and promote him as an artist and everything like that and not keep it up to his end of the bargain. So we really want to hear from Sheik Luce. Styles P coming out and jumping the gun and speaking for her on behalf of the whole group. I mean, I get it. I'm not mad at you, but at the end of the day, I think that all due respect that you were out of line, especially of the comment of you basically saying that Matt Hopper should have never had Jay Hood on his show telling his side of the story. Me and many other of the fans that let's, let's grew up listening to y'all, grew up listening to Jay Hood for the couple of years that he was down with y'all, I, I want to know what happened. And I'm glad that Matt Hopper didn't, wasn't biased and was able to give Jay Hood a platform to be able to tell his side of the story. Now, um, let me just post up real quick right here. This is what um, Styles P had to say, literally maybe a couple hours ago. Styles P had a lot to say um, towards Matt Hoffa, but mostly Jay Hood. Let's listen to it real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Math, I'm disappointed in you, bro. In my expert opinion, you didn't ask me anything about Jay Hood. Then you want to have Jay Hood up there. You could have called me on my line to do when it comes to working and getting business out. But that one man was some whack ass shit. But I get it. Love is love. I still love y'all. I still love the show. We get what it is. But next time, you could, you could G check or fact check the thing. One man, no clickbait group. Roots don't owe you no fucking interview. And nobody definitely don't old Jay Hood no fucking 60 G's. I'm really disappointed in Jay Hood to, to be honest with you. Hood has been 20 something years, bro. 20 something years. We never spoke greasy about you after you did your bullshit, you did your sucker shit. Nobody never said anything wrong about you at no time. Actually, I spent three 
after you did that bullshit I spent about three years of my life protecting your ass. When people wanted to touch you and harm you in places and call me and had to drop on you, leave that man alone. God bless him. You know what I'm saying? But here it is 20 years later. Luke's been in your house to fight your father for you before. Things gave your mother money when your house burned down. Mm, that was deep. Uh, I want to cut it. He said a lot right there. Um, like I said, he first addressed Matt Hopper saying how disappointed he was and how Matt Hopper should back check. Then he went on and said, well, well I'm really disappointed into Jay Hood. He basically saying, yo, it's been, it's been 20 something years. It's been 20 something years since, you know what I mean? We never spoke ill will. And I never heard the lock speak negatively or at all about Jay Hood at that point. Like I never, like all the interviews I've been watching throughout the years, whether it was on The Breakfast Club, whether it was on Sway, whether it, it was on Hot 97, wherever I see these guys at, I never heard them even mention um, whatever happened to Jay Hood. Um, but let's continue playing um, what he said. He said that I guess Sheik Luch uh, went to Jay Hood's house to go fight his father, which is confusing to me because according to Jay Hood, his father was a deadbeat and wasn't around. But you know, that's either here nor there. Let's let's continue to listen to this. We actually made you into the artist you are. Luch used to argue with Flex to play your shit and do this, but your old sixty G's. Label didn't even really want to fuck with you, but your old 60 G's. Ah, okay, let's talk about the 60 G's, right? So he says that um, the homie um, Sheik Luch was fighting, uh, not fight, not literally physically fighting, but you know, trying to get DJs like uh, Funkmaster Flex to play his music on the radio and everything like that, blah, blah, blah. But that that is, you making that statement to me is irrelevant. Um, if the label or whoever cut him a check for 60000 to be able to get on his feet after he experienced such a traumatic situation with his house burning down and losing everything, you're telling me that the 60 Gs, uh, I don't understand that 60 Gs is, was, was eaten up. We had to get the money back and recoup it. What are you trying to say? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. If you owe the man 60 Gs. And he had to pay taxes on money because according to Jay Hood, he had to pay taxes on the 60 G's. And that's how he found out that it was a check missing. He's like, yo, how the hell I owe this much taxes if I didn't make X amount of money? They're like, yo, this down the third. Because Jay Hood went down and spoke to somebody from, you know, the label and they asked him. He, they, the label said, I hope that the money that we gave you was uh, up enough to help you out in your situation. And Jay Hood was like, what money are you talking about? I'm confused. That's when it came out that, you know, somebody stole 60 G's. So for Styles P to say what he just said about Sheet Loose is fighting to get his music played on the radio, that's cool. He's supposed to do that as promoting his artist, as him being the quote-unquote CEO or the leader of that artist. He signed to D-Block, which is Sheet Luke's label. Yes, you're supposed to fight to get your artist's music promoted and paid because if he gets paid, you get paid, period. That's how that works. Um, but yeah, back to Styles P. You mentioned about that is irrelevant. He still shouldn't have got his, he should have got robbed. There's no if and buts about it. He should never have got robbed. If you, if, if y'all stole 60 G's from that man, pay that man this money. Stop playing. Point blank, period. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of people were saying about the whole uh, Master P and Romeo thing, and Romeo should be grateful because that's father and son. You know, that's debatable, but in this situation, it's business. These people knew each other for a few years. It's all business. They didn't grow up with each other, nothing like that, Jay Hood and um and, and the lock. They didn't grow up with each other. They signed this young man, thought he was dope, thought that it was able to make an opportunity to make some money and grow the group and grow the label. And you guys... It seemed like I didn't pay that man his money. You know what I mean? Let's go. And the sucker shit about it, why I ain't even say you know you ain't no 60 G because you tried to fucking sue us. You went to the lawyers. You tried to sue us. As he should. All due respect. I like style speed. I like everybody in the locks. I grew up to all of them. If he did the right thing, anybody would do the right thing. You know, 50 Cent is known to sue somebody. They said, shit, he got a lawyer on speed dial. All artists, if they're not being, if they're being robbed by the label, they should absolutely uh, 
seek um, legal advice, legal counseling, and sue, absolutely, but continue. You tried to see that we had your publishing, to see that we didn't have your publishing, and your publishing was there. And then I bet you never told the people that, that I told you, hey, whatever you want to do, however you feel it, God bless you, I'll make sure it's okay. You fix whatever you, what needs to be fixed, how it needs to be fixed. But you still went in there, suck the shit you did, so then niggas never wanted to fuck with you. And 20 years down the line, you are still bitter and using our name for attention. Why didn't you make success? Successful albums in them 20 years, but do something with your time. He couldn't make successful albums throughout the years because he was blackballed. You know what I mean? Um, he went against one of the one of the most popular groups of all time to this day. You guys did you guys did versus battle with Dipset, and you guys showed how professional and sync prepared you guys were. You know what I mean? That was a uh, uh, epic time as far as watching all on versus battle y'all still got it everybody still look like they in shape everybody still look healthy and strong everybody still correct everybody doing good you know it would have been nice if jay hood would have been called out you know what i mean during the versus battle to do a, a song or two you know what i mean because he was a part of the block you know what i mean him i remember bully you know what i mean um and those are the only two i think of outside the main group of chic luch um, Styles P and obviously Jedicus. Well, go ahead, Styles P. Go ahead, talk your shit, my guy. I'm successful. That is on you, my brother. You're not, you're not part of D Block because you're cut from the cloth we cut from. We would never turn around because we ain't happy. But the niggas who took care of you, you feel old more that you never gave shit to. They gave you your name, your look, your, 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 your fucking everything. And you wanted more looking at other people and you didn't get it, so you decided to flip. You ain't like us. So that's why they didn't work. But I'm offended that you didn't just go up there and actually fucking apologize. I don't know why you can just apologize. When the hell, how the fuck are you a co-founder of D-Block? Are you fucking me? I love you. I, I'm, I'm just curious on um, what J Hood should be apologized for. Um, if y'all did a poor job at managing y'all artists and not giving him the promotion that he, he deserved, and not including him at certain events that y'all was going through, like photo shoots and everything like that. And not being accountable for the missing $60,000. What should he apologize for? Now, um, Jay Hood said that he do take accountability for some of the things that he may have done. He said he regret doing the whole dragon of the chain and all that type of stuff that I wasn't supposed to serve, that wasn't supposed to come up. But you should have known better. Once the camera is out, yeah, so I was gonna post it on the internet, and it, it is what it is. Um, I think that if I'm gonna be objective here, I think that him going over to Fifty Cent, y'all, y'all enemies, to go up there and entertain a meeting with Fifty Cent, um, was foolish. If you ask me, um, it doesn't look good on his part because it's like that is a snakeish move. Even though if y'all going through some type of discrepancy, you know, you're gonna line up with their enemies. You know what I mean? You know, and I remember Tony had a song. It was over J, um, the Jam Rock beat. It was like, "Welcome to Jam Rock." Remember that song? Well, I remember uh, Tony coming on that song. He was like, "FD Block, FD Block, welcome to Jam FD Block." He kept on saying FD over and over again on that song. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I got this the song again. I think J Hook was on that song and shit like that. And J Hook got some diss records towards. Um, the locks and everything like that, but you know, Jay Hood was young. Not saying that's an excuse, but you know, he definitely did hold accountability and said that you know he shouldn't have had done that. But you know, that's neither here nor there. Let's continue. I wish the best. God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing, but keep our fucking name out your mouth, man. Keep our name out your mouth, and anybody you see on our name with respect, we showed you niggas what loyalty is, what honor is. I don't care about clickbait. I don't care about interviews. Do your shit and get it right. J Hood is not the block because when he got did the suffer shit, he didn't have discipline, dedication, and determination. So. 
boom, that's all it is. But damn, you should have apologized as a grown man 20 years later and just did at that. But no, here we go. Nobody owes you a damn thing and stop lying on people's names. Like, I've never addressed this shit in all these years. Always say, God bless you, keep it moving. But damn, bro, 20 years later, you still. Come on, man. What's up, bro? What's up with you? 20 years later? Are you kidding me? 20 years later, you don't got nothing better to talk about. We never spoke on you bad, never said anything ill about you, never been on any radio station, anywhere, TV, and said one damn thing about you. You dragged a chain on the floor, you ran around, you, you, you were trying to be with 50 and them cheap unit didn't take you after me, you flipped us, you thought they was going to take you, just backfired on you. See, you're not saying everything that happened, and I don't want to bother you saying it's fucking 20 years ago, and who gives a fuck? Move on your life, but you ain't going to lie and say somebody robbed you for something they didn't rob you for. When niggas did nothing but years of taking care of you. Did you ever get charged for a studio fucking session ever? Did anybody ever ask you for a receipt or money back or do anything when niggas brought you you gear, clothes, sneakers, helped your mom pay the rent? Did anybody ever give you a fucking, like, every other? So, if I, this is my opinion. I could be wrong. Y'all leave a comment in the live chat. Leave a comment down below in the chat to let, let me know, um, in the comment section, let me know if I'm wrong. But by Styles P mentioning they didn't charge for studio time and, and, and the clothes that they bought them and the gear that they bought them and everything like that, it's Styles P insinuating that the reason why he didn't get that $50,000 check is because they recouping the money back. Like he felt as though the label should never cut him that check of 60,000 because he was never charged of studio time. So now he's taking the money back, he's recouping the money back. Um, did they think that Jay Hood was gonna be a flop and they were trying to their best to try to recoup as much money as possible of the money that they lost to the artists that they thought they was they was able to. Say, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if y'all understand where I'm trying to go with this, but it, it sounds like Styles P is trying to make excuses for, you know, why they don't owe him sixty thousand dollars because all the stuff that they did for him. I could be wrong, but that's just my unexpert opinion. Let's go. The fucking record company an invoice? No. Relax, buddy, and keep it G. And just as far as this clip based shit comes, man, stay honorable. Uh, or no, don't don't try to use us for clean. That shit ain't fly. That shit ain't fly. And it ain't cool. I'm fresh out the gym, and I, 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 I'm on my fifth post seeing you live, and I'm tired now. Now I'm fucking tired. It's been twenty some years. And you want to use that shit to stay alive? Now stay on God bless you. All right. So that's what um. That's what my guy, the ghost, had to say. Shout out to um, SP, the ghost. That's what he had to say um, about the situation. Um, I think Matt Topper will be going live soon. I'm waiting on him to go live and see what he has to say. But Matt did go live on his Instagram. Matt responded to, um, Matt had responded to Styles P within an hour of Styles P dropping that. And this is what Matt Topper had to say. <laughs> Styles P had some words for me. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna spawn here. Since we doing internet shit. Since we doing internet shit. Three o'clock. I'll be live on YouTube. Three o'clock. I'll be live on YouTube. I'm gonna say what I gotta say, and I don't want this shit to get twisted with nobody else. No future guests, no guests before, after. I don't want this shit to get twisted with nobody else. Since we doing internet shit, since we doing internet shit, cool, cool, cool. Three o'clock, I'll be live on YouTube. I'm gonna address all this shit one time, one time, one time. Three o'clock, I'll be live on YouTube. I'm gonna address this shit one time. Love to everybody though. 
Love to everybody. Okay? Salute. Love y'all. See All you right. at 3 o'clock. No. All right. Um, he's live right now. Matt Hoffa is live right now as we speak. This is live. We're talking right now. This is breaking news. He got over 6,000 people in his chat right now. I'm not out of, out of respect for his content. I'm not going to play uh, too much. You know, Matt Topper, if you have an issue with this, just let me know behind the scenes and I'll cut this part out. I was on mute. I was trying to explain to y'all. I'm sorry. I was trying to explain to y'all that um, Matt Topper is live as we speak right now with over 6,000 people in this chat. That's him live right now as we speak. They're talking right now as we speak. Um, um, I'm curious on what he has to say. I'm very curious on what he has to say. Let's go. I'm only going to play a little bit. And you guys, make sure y'all go over to the Mad Taffa, my expert opinion YouTube channel. Go over there, like, share, subscribe, and listen to what he had to say. But I'm going to play a few minutes so we can get a gist of what's going on. And you guys, after this show, after this, go over there so you can hear the rest. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe to Behind the Bar 3.0 as well. That's a fact. Where do I saw? Shout to Styles P. All love. Met you. You're a great human being. Shout out to the locks. I haven't had the chance to sit with Kiss the same way that I sat with you or she. Shout out to J Hood. Shout out to everybody. My job is to ask them these questions. The answers they give are not answers that I wrote out on a piece of paper. I don't get an itinerary from niggas before they come to the shop on what they want to talk about. Sometimes a nigga might say, yo, I want to address this, I want to address that, blah, 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 whatever. But nine times out of 10, I don't know what's about to be said in the shop. I don't, I don't know what's about to be said in the shop. Now, as far as this J Hood and, and Locks controversy, this is how I work. Styles and J Hood both came to the shop in the same week. In the same week. Now, the Styles interview was so good. There was a lot of things I forgot to ask, especially with Mecca. I blame Mecca. <laughs> Because Mecca, Mecca sometimes he jumped the gun on timeline. I'm trying to get a specific timeline. Sometimes Mecca jumped out there. And, you know, he brought up DMX and that just skipped a whole, a whole era. He brought up DMX, rest in peace. He brought up DMX ass and, and skipped a whole bunch of shit. But at the end of the day, I still felt like it was a great interview. Was there no reason to go back and to ask questions about this, questions about that, whatever, whatever, whatever. Love to Styles, love to Kiss, love to Sheep. Um, I went to this show. It was great. Now, when Jay Hood came through, the things that he was saying was so controversial that I was like, man, I don't know how to feel about this. I don't want niggas to think that I'm I'm trying to move shady or I'm trying to like other platforms who would jump at the opportunity to have some dirty, like to, to be a part of the dirty section of YouTube or the dirty section of Instagram. That is not my goal. It's never been my goal. I would have felt like I needed to hold the, the, the Tony Yayo shit if I felt like that, if I was that type of nigga. Shout out to Yayo though, incredible numbers. I still feel like niggas should be able to have a conversation at all without all the arguing and all the back and forth. But love to Yayo, you know what I mean? I'd love to do a part two. You know what I'm saying? But I felt the way. And I said, you know what, man? Let me reach out. I don't got niggas' numbers. I don't, I don't know if Styles thought I had his number. He never gave me his number. I didn't have no direct contact to him. I had a, a contact to his manager. But the issue wasn't with Styles. I even text Jada, who the night before, Smile, said you love to come show da 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 da. I hit him up, no response. Now these episodes happen in the same week, so it was back to back. I had.
held the jailer joint. Because I was like, nah, I need to get in contact with she. And maybe I could have hit uh Styles P manager or whatever, but but nah, I just felt I, I felt like I needed to attack Sheik. There's three sides to every story, right? I believe that. There's three sides to this his side, his side, and then there's the truth. That's a fact. I want you to go over to um Matt Topic's platform to play the so y'all can see the rest of that particular um episode. Also, make sure y'all check out my um, Matt Topper interview as well. Um, I'll probably put a, a a link in the in the comment section to go check out my Matt Topper interview. Um, make sure y'all um, like up, share, and subscribe to the channel um, behind the bar 3.0. Here's a snip of my um, Matt Topper interview. Make sure y'all go watch that. It was epic. We got a special guest in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Special guest in the building. This is a trap rapper turned smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rapper. They got balls like a little bit. 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 Salute, salute, salute. How you doing, man? Nice to see you. Down the Marco, Marco.